I was in high school, graduated from high school, went to Queens College, and I saw an article in a newspaper of the Grace Downs Air Career School. And I said, this sounds interesting. I can travel and get around and be a flight hostess. So I enrolled in the Grace Downs Air Career School, and it was like a three or four month training program. Very intense training program. I enrolled in that and got 95s and got good grades. Uh, Knowing I was the only black in the school at the time, I was saying, well, you really got to stick to the books and do well here. Um, and when I graduated, I began to have interviews. I was interviewed by TWA, Mohawk, and Capital, and I never got a response. And I'm wondering, well, what's going on? You know, I got these 95s. I was a fairly attractive young woman. What was going on? And every time I would ask, no one would say anything. And finally, one day, I had stopped by the school and I was coming out and one of the chief hostesses from Capitol, she saw me and she said, Pat, she said, I can't stand to see you go through this anymore. She said, the airline does not hire Negroes. We were called Negroes back in the 50s. She said, they don't hire Negroes. And personally, I could not believe that this was going on in New York. It really never came to me that New York was just as racist as the South. I grew up when the South was having such terrible problems, so I had a thing inside of me that this just can't be, not in New York. It was emotionally upsetting. But then I vowed, okay, you're not gonna do this to us. You're not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let you do this. And I decided I was gonna go with it all the way. I didn't care how long it took. And whether it was me that got hired or somebody else, somebody was going to get hired. So the minute that she told me, I went home and I had a family friend, uh, Fred Weaver, who was commissioner of housing. And we used to call him Pop. And I called Pop up. I said, would you believe they don't hire Negroes in the airline industry? He said, we'll take care of that. So he referred me to Adam Clayton Powell. So I went to see uh, Adam Clayton Powell. He referred me to the State Commission Against Discrimination at the time. It's now Human Rights. And obviously there had been another black woman who had filed a complaint, but it just doesn't seem as if anybody really carried it through. And I had a lawyer, Solomon Heifetz, and um, a Jewish attorney, and a black female attorney, Mary Brown. They took the case. It took several years, of course, because to claim discrimination takes a lot of research. They researched many, many airlines, including Mohawk, TWA, Capital, United, and a few others, and found that there had been no hiring of blacks in flight to that date. They were just ground crews. So they researched it. It took a couple of years to research it. And during that time, of course, I was called many times to ask me questions. It was a long waiting period frustrating because it just kept going on. And while that's going on, I had to go on with my life. So I was in college trying to uh, finish and get my degree. And then they called me one day and said, we're going to court. We went to court and we went through the trial hearings. And I used to stop at this little store on Parsons Boulevard and wait for the bus when I was coming from Queens College. And the man in the store, one day I was sitting waiting for the bus, he said, Pat, Pat, it's in the newspaper. It's in the newspaper. I said, what? He said, they have to hire you. They've got 30 days to hire you. I said, you're kidding. And um, I just couldn't wait to get home. My mother already had phone calls. So this was the beginning of an experience. I was very, very excited and very happy about it but I also knew that it was gonna be a challenge. And I had to sit back for a moment. And I had to say to myself, now there's one thing that you have to do. And I had to say to myself, you're gonna take your inner mind and uncloud it and open it and put it on a broad plane. That I had to polish my intellect and my, eye, my mind to the point where I could look at the world now that I'm gonna face, to be able to see what was true, what was not true, what was good, what was bad. 
I had to practice this so that my inner spirit could be free because I had to go at this with this open mind so that I wouldn't mess it up in any way at all with that negative, that hurt feeling that I had inside. And so when I practiced this theory, I was able to go at it, to be the black woman that I knew I had to be. I was inside, but it was a growth process as well. And that I had to now confront this challenge. And I knew it was gonna be a challenge because here I was, this black woman on this magnificent top airline traveling all through the South. So I had to be, I kind of think that I may have overdone it in a lot of ways because I felt I had to be perfect so that I don't ever ruin it for anyone else. You know, that I was, I could not make any mistakes because I knew if I made any mistakes that it would be magnified and it would ruin the chance for other black people. So during my time of flying, it was a lot of emotional stress for me. When we have a dream, and I try to tell all little kids, when you have a dream and you want to do something, no matter what the barriers are, you can do it. You can do it. There's always a way around them. Always. And you've got to have faith in what you believe in and that you can do it. And, and I, on that, I live on that theory, and I, I just believe that, you know, I try to tell these young people, you got to study hard, you got to work hard, because you have to excel, even today, in the year 2010, as a black person, you have to excel. So you have to study hard, you know, and I just wish there was more work I could do with young people to get them to understand this is what you have to do, this is where you have to go.